This is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a YouTube video about implant dentistry. During this case, we're going to be evaluating how to place this lateral implant following the orthodontic treatment. The orthodontist has sent the patient back over for us to evaluate things. One of the things we look for is the zenith of the tooth. You can see the contralateral side. We want to create the same kind of look and feel on the implant side as the natural tooth. We decide to use Nobel Clinician, so we take a DICOM file with the uh, teeth slightly apart so that we're going to do a smart fusion. So a smart fusion is when we take a model and bring it into the CT so we can do some planning. So we're looking around here. One of the things you'll notice is the scatter from the braces. The patient doesn't have any fillings but the scatter is coming from the metal braces and the CT kind of blending through this area makes a ghost that uh, gets picked up on the scan itself. As we move around the CT you can see that the teeth are just slightly apart which makes the fusion of the model with the CT a little bit easier because the computer can kind of pick this up a little bit better. Part of the smart fusion technology is to do what's called a Nobel Procera scan at the dental lab. So a model is taken of the patient's mouth, a high accurate model. So we're usually using a PVS impression material, sending this to the lab. The lab will then scan this model Plus also do a wax up of where the final crown should be and these two things get put together in the Nobel Procedure software. So this is happening on the model. We can see the wax up of the braces as well to block out any undercuts on the braces. So we want this uh, stereolithic guide to sit actually on the incisal edges of the teeth and not on the braces themselves because the braces have kind of undercuts and pulls and things in the model. So here you can see the Nobel Procedure model getting scanned and you can see after it's scanned it's in the computer and can be uh, then rendered into a 3D model that's going to be sent back to my office. Now this model is referenced based on the original request by the dentist so that the patient uh, can then have this stitched into their CT scan. There's the wax up, you can see it and you can see how the two parts go together prior to sending it back to my office. Here the dental technician is sending the model so I can do a smart fusion which is quite exciting. The model's been left on Nobel BioCare's secure server and what will happen is once I request it it's going to come down into my computer and then start the smart fusion alignment. You can see here it's not aligning. The reason why it doesn't align is because of the scatter of the braces and also since we've added wax to the braces themselves on the model so the computer needs to have a little bit of help with alignment so what we'll do is show a couple cusps it's a very easy procedure and kind of stitch these together so you click on a few different spots and then click a couple buttons and then the alignment occurs the alignment usually occurs by itself and very easily but uh, on these cases when you're doing wax up or there's a lot of scatter then you do have to rely on sometimes a manual because it's this wax that's over top of the brace that's kind of throwing it off. So we click Smart Fusion again and the Smart Fusion occurs and then now we're going to check the alignment. We're checking alignment to make sure that the model is lining up with the natural teeth. So you can see here it's sitting on the incisal edges and the occlusal surfaces of the teeth so the alignment is quite good. You can still see the scatter which we can clean up later on but now the braces are not playing a role in this because they've been blocked out. Once we have the Smart Fusion model in place, now we can see the height of contour of the particular tooth. We can see where the zenith is. We can see exactly what we want to complete. So we'll start by clicking a dot here on the ridge and showing the angle we want the implant to be placed. And the computer's going to choose uh, a particular length and size. So we can see here that I'd like to place a noble active implant, so I'm going to go back and uh, position that implant in the ridge to be kind of coming out through the ideal position on the, the ridge. So you can see here that the implant's not in the right direction, so we want to move this back, get it into position, it's going to be good, and we can see that uh, we can take the tip and move it around. Now we can start to have a good look at this. We can see in three dimensions, 
as we rotate around this axis, which also shows the size of the implant, we we'll rotate around the axis, we can see the world based on where the implant is. So we can take the tip, move it back in a little bit, move the body of the implant, and start to see where we want this to be. Now our goal is to make the right and the left lateral look very similar, so we'll mark the zenith of the lateral, and we can see if we go to the model where we want to create the uh, height, we can now pick a point and then base the depth of the implant based on this point on the soft tissue. So I'll actually be able to measure down from this point and I want the implant to be about three millimeters deep from this point. So if I put this point and mark it on and put the distance, I can take the implant, put it to the exact depth I want to put in, and you'll see that it's turning orange on the ring here, which means I'm hitting soft tissue a little bit, which is fine because we can move the soft tissue at time of surgery. Because I'm going to choose to flap this and move that tissue from the lingual out to the facial. So as I do this, you can see that now I have the implant just slightly subcrestal, but I need to have it subcrestal so I can base it on the size and dimension of the other lateral. I want these two to be the same. So as I position this, I'm going to be able to measure exactly how deep this implant is going to be, where we can go back and we can measure from the top of the implant and see that we're going to be actually a little bit subcrestal. So we'll take a dot here, measure down, it's about 1.4 millimeters subcrestal. So based on the ring that's on the stereolithic guide, I'm going to be placing this implant 1.4 millimeters below the crest of the bone, and this is going to be in the ideal position to get this to look like the other side. Now we checked the width of the laterals with periapicals, but we can also measure them here on the CT. So you can see by taking a measurement from one, the, can the canine to the central, we can see that it's 6.9 to 7 millimeters of width here, and the roots are very parallel, so the orthodontist has done a fantastic job setting this case up. And you can see if we go to the other side, one of the ways I can do a nice measurement is to actually pretend I'm placing an implant over here so I can look at that area in uh, three dimension. So I'll just pretend I'm placing an implant. I'm not actually doing this for treatment of any kind other than to evaluate uh, distance. And uh, you can see we'll place an implant. And as I rotate around this axis now, I'll be able to check the width of the uh, left lateral, which is, uh, we can see here if I move the implant into a position so I can get a good feel for dimension in 3D space, and I'm able to measure and tell exactly how wide the original lateral was on the other side, which is going to be helpful because we could actually move the teeth a little bit tighter if we had to, or widen them out a little bit, but still get the implant in there based on 3D models. So here we can see that this is about 6.97 millimeters, so exactly like the other side. So if we get the depth of this implant correct, this dimension of this crown should be very, very similar to the other side. So once we have this, we want to approve the case. We will approve the model, approve the position, so we can start to make the template. Now we're going to approve the plan and start to make the stereolithic guide, which is going to be called a Nobel guide. And so you can see as the guide is made, the computer chooses that uh, it's going to fit over the teeth in such a fashion. I can see that I may want to have this go a little bit longer to pick up that last molar. So I can go back in and tell the computer to pull this back a little bit so I can get full coverage. You don't have to do this, but it's just another thing you can do and then you click the button and it's going to re-show you so it's going to render another uh, uh, perspective guide and give you that. So I've changed the model now to purple just so we can see things. You can change it to whatever color you want. Now you can see the position of the implant and you can see also that the ring is showing orange which means I'm close to the cast. So as long as I'm just soft tissue close that's not an issue but this is going to give me depth, angulation and position and as I flap the tissue, get the tissue out of the way, that will enable this to fit exactly where I want to position this. As I don't like to punch these particular areas, I want to move the soft tissues and keep them so that I can have a robust looking uh, papilla and have a beautiful final crown. 
So as you look inside, you can see the relief that's uh, been designed around this area. So it's going to fit over the braces. So by putting wax over the braces on the model at the lab, just prior to the scan, we can provide this relief. So you do want to make sure that this fits on top of your model before you're planning your surgery. Look at the little implant uh, kind of peeking through here in the back. This is going to be in the ideal position in the ridge in between the two roots. Buccal lingual positioning is going to be ideal. The depth is going to be ideal. So this is going to make a very successful case. So once we click another button, this is going to send this guide off to be fabricated at the Nobel BioCare facility. It's a secure form and you can get the guide itself. You can also buy drills here and implants here. So everything that you need is going to be built into this account. And it's going to work out your cost and tell you exactly what you should be kind of billing for your expenses. So this is allowing me to see that I want to have all this stuff at the time of surgery and have it all prepared which is what a better fantastic way. You're going to know exactly what your implant position is going to be. You're going to need to know what you need to have for the case. And it's going to tell you last the number, which is ARLL169, which tells the technician and my uh, assistants, this is what the guide's going to look like when it comes back from the particular case. Now it takes about a few days to a week for this to be manufactured and sent back to you. So after that, it's going to be uh, sent in a uh, light sensitive bag. And this bag is uh, the spot where you should keep this until you go to use it and there's a particular instruction. So it's going to stay on the bag ARLL 169 because that's the patient. Here the ring is showing exactly where the depth and angulation and position of this implant is going to go based on soft tissue, based on aesthetics, and based on the bone anatomy. This is going to be the ideal position. Now these implants can be uh, Nobel BioCare implants used to, to do this, but you can also use two millimeter guides to place any implant you particularly want. Now the beauty of this case is it's going to be sitting over top of the braces so that incisal edges are going to guide this case and make it so we don't have to take the braces off to place this implant. So in fact the uh, orthodontist can continue to work a little bit. We'll be showing this case on YouTube, so check back and you'll see how I place the implant. And then we'll show you the follow-up of the particular case. So this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this has been a YouTube video about implant dentistry.